These are the men and women of Beaver Valley, the bravest of the brave. They fought fearlessly for their country, their city, their community, and for the ideals we share as Americans. They served proudly in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Gulf War, Iraq, and Afghanistan. Here, now, are their stories, their own experiences in their own words, the words of the heroes of Beaver Valley. Originally from Erie and the son of a military veteran, Sean Higgins joined the United States Army in June 1990. He ended up spending 22 years serving his country. Well, I, I enlisted going into my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what I wanted to do with life. I knew I wasn't ready for college. I didn't want to waste anybody's money. So to find purpose in life, find direction, mm -hmm. the Army was, was there. And it was something I seen as a kid growing up with my dad. So it was a no-brainer for me to say, walked in the recruiter on a Wednesday. I wanted to join. And Friday, I was ASVAB tested and physicaling on Monday. So it really worked out. Not long after Higgins joined the Army, the first Gulf War was about to begin. For Higgins, his introduction to the Army took on a new light. Maybe 10 days of basic training left when Saddam's forces invaded our Kuwait. So we were told, hey, you guys are going to war. You better start paying attention because this, is, this now just got real. So life changed. 19-year-old kid, basic training. Man, I joined the Army and we're going off to fight a force. So it was kind of an eye-opener for me. Um, before I was in the Army six months, I was in a uh, foreign country serving, waiting to uh, cross the border to defend our forces, you know, provide communications to the frontline troops. It's kind of surreal, you know. I'm, I don't know if you, you remember seeing any of the pictures of the long convoys driving up through the desert. And, you know, as a, as a young kid, all I knew my mission was if we stop, we set up an antenna. If we don't stop, we keep driving. And, you know, Throughout that convoy period, and it was three days straight of driving, very little sleep, very tired. Um, occasionally we did put up an antenna, put a shot in for relay comms, but I found out years later, we were a decoy. We were a target to draw out the Iraqi Republican Guard for them to start attacking us so that the armored divisions could come around each side and take them out. <laughs> so how do I feel about it now versus then, it was, it's kind of... Yeah, we got lucky, or we are that good, which we are, we're that good. We lived in burning oil well fields for months on end before we're, our mission was over and we were headed back to Saudi Arabia. So 19 year old kid turned 20 in the, uh, in the desert, um, it, it was an eye opener. Throughout his time in the military, Higgins served in both support and direct combat roles. His positions were all within communications, making sure that there were secure means for troops and commanders to contact each other. On September 11th, 2001, Higgins was serving in Korea. 9-11 was a weird night. It really was, because for you guys, it was Tuesday morning. I was over in Korea, I was away from my family. But I um, was watching the Monday night football game, I actually fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was switching channels to try to find the score, but all I saw was what was happening in New York. So the first thing I did at that point was I got on the phone, called my wife, we could talk for 10 hours. So I get her on the phone, what is going on? She said, I don't know, but plane just hit. And you know, for, for me to hear my son, who's 18 going on 19 now, he was just a toddler at the time. Daddy, why'd they fly a plane in the building? You know, I wasn't there to comfort my wife, I wasn't there to comfort my son. So it was kind of a scary feeling to see our nation under attack and I'm over in a foreign land and I'm helpless. So there was a lot of concern there, but it's just something that you gotta, it's part of the job you gotta deal with. And, and every September, it's like every Memorial Days, I've lost a lot of good friends because of what transpired from September 11th. Um, so the, the Memorial Days, the September 11th, they're very emotional days. After his time in Korea ended, Higgins returned to the United States to spend a short time with his family before going back overseas for the invasion of Iraq in 2003. He accepted a position as a remote RAU team chief, providing cellular signals and secure communications for the 3rd Infantry Division. So instead of being at, at, at the signal unit, <laughs> Behind lines, I'm now with the division artillery attack, 
And the tag jumps forward to every battle. And they're right there at the front line, front edge of the battle, overseeing who, which gun's going to throw rounds which way. So that became quite an interesting ride. When we left Camp Pennsylvania to the tactical assembly area the night before the ground war launched off in Iraq, we moved to a forward operating position to where I watched the first volleys fly. We started bombing the berm. And from there, it was, I mean, fast paced. First four days, I don't even think we slept much at all. We actually rolled into the town of Najaf, got halfway through it and had to turn around and come back because it got way too hot where the gunships come in and, and cleared the roadway for us. So to, to see that experience firsthand, to feel the ground shake firsthand, know our fire superiority is the best in the world and you got to feel sorry for the guy on the other end of it. it. It's really something that'll stick with you for life. I led my guys into A, providing security for that tax site, as well as putting up an antenna and putting in a radio link back to the rear so that we could gift them a phone so that they can talk to commander to commander. So it was, it was a multifaceted mission. Whatever needed to be done, you're going to do to make it through. Once in Baghdad, the 3rd Division Artillery began to receive non-governmental organizations. The Red Cross was one of these organizations providing aid in Iraq. Higgins provided secure communications for them, and on his routine trips to the Baghdad International Airport, Higgins was witness to the comings and goings of many groups and individuals. One of the memories that haunts me is, is seeing a young child blown up, not much to her burnt all over her body, and they were taking her out of Iraq and getting her over to Europe so she could receive better medical treatment. That haunts me. It haunts me because I see this little kid who was my son's age. Sometimes in my dreams, that little kid's my son. So there's good, there's bad with it, but we stood up that immigration. So to be able to give back positively to a fledgling democracy was awesome in itself, but also had good times and bad times with it. There were both good times and bad times for Higgins during his time in the military. After his time in Iraq, he would continue to serve at home and overseas until March 2012. Really, I, I call it the best mistake I ever made. I joined the Army to find direction, and I forgot to get out because I found more than just direction. I found a life. I found a family. I found brothers from all over the world, brothers and sisters, because combat support, you work alongside women, men and women. Um, people that, God, are some of the greatest people in the world. Um, they're not blood, but they're family. You know, and that was the best part of the mistake of not getting out.